What up, y'all? This is your boy, Mr. Jam Town Ray Mellon. You're listening to the Entertainment Report for Monday, September 22nd, 2014, delivering some of the major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook or on Twitter, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R A Y M E L O. Or on Twitter at the Enter Report. You can also listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to tonight's episode and past episodes of the program. Hopefully, everybody had a great weekend. That's official. He's keeping up with the Kardashians' personality. Kris Jenner filed for divorce from her husband, the 22 years Bruce Jenner, on Monday, according to legal documents obtained by the Rat. After announcing their separation last October, Jenner cited irreconcilable differences in the legal papers filed at the Superior Court of Los Angeles. Jenner, who's 58, listed the official date of the separation as June 1, 2013, and has requested joint custody of youngest daughter Kylie Jenner, 17. The couple's older daughter, Kendall, turns 18 in November. The legal documents, which were signed on September 5, 2014, states that she is requesting to keep her jewelry and all assets from the date of separation with other property to be divided up. The couple told E! News in a statement last October, We are living separately and we are much happier this way, but we have always had much love and respect for each other. Even though we are separated, we will always remain best friends. And, as always, our family will remain our top priority. At the time, they said that no plans, they had no plans for divorce. Chris Jenner was previously married to Robert Kardashian, the father of her famous daughters, Kim, Courtney, and Chloe, and son Robert. They divorced in 1991, just one month before she married former Olympian Bruce Jenner, who was 64 years old. Think Like a Man 2 actress Megan Good recently became one of the latest victims of the widespread nude photo hacking scandal, but she had some choice words for people who are posting the images. The actress, who is married to veteran studio executive Devon Franklin, posted a statement on her Instagram page Sunday saying she has, quote, said from, for everyone experiencing this, then she ripped people who are sharing the images. For everyone who's reposting the leaked nudes, you should be ashamed of yourselves. Good added, these pictures were for my husband, and at the at the end of the day, evidently, we all know how I feel about my titties. That's all I've got, folks. At least four different po- photos were posted of the 33-year-old on various platforms Sunday afternoon, including Twitter, Redid, and 4chan. The topless images all show the actors posing for selfies. They earlier leaked nude photos of Good's Think Like a Man to co-star Gabrielle Union surfaced online. In a joint statement from Union and her NBA star husband, Dwayne Wade, the Nollywood said they plan to contact the FBI. The statement says, It has come to our attention that our private moments that were shared and deleted solely between my husband and myself have been leaked by some vultures. Among the other famous names purportedly shown in the nude photos that leaked Saturday were Spring Breakers actors Vanessa Hutchins, reality star Kim Kardashian, Super um, Superman Returns actress Kate Bosworth, chart-topping singer Rihanna, and Olympic soccer star Hope Solo. The pictures were uploaded to the website 4chan, but were removed per the site's copyright infringement policies. Still, many of the photos remain at Redit. These are the latest leaked photos surfaced just three weeks after another huge batch of nude photos appeared online, reportedly showing Oscar-winning actress Jennifer Lawrence, Selena Gomez, Mary Elizabeth Weinstead, Kate Upton, and Kristen Dunst. One or more hackers appear to have stolen the images from the actress's Apple iCloud accounts, which stores um, private pictures and documents for um, subscribers' cell phones and computers. Twitter was on fire Saturday night while HBO aired Beyonce and husband Jay-Z's two-hour concert documentary of their On the Run tour. Featuring the superstars in their first collaborative tour and their first HBO concert event, the special was taped on September 12 and 13 at Stade de France in Paris during the only international leg of their recent tour. Taking turns on stage, Beyonce made several makeup and costume changes throughout the concert, each outfit inspiring their own lots of Twitter reactions. Then there was the music. The special included performances of more than 40 songs, including Crazy in Love, Drunk in Love, Girls, a performance of Flawless with rapper Nicki Minaj, and of course, a performance of the duo's 2003 Bonnie and Clyde. Beyonce also did a cover of Lauryn Hill's X Factor, which became a highlight of the night. The couple has been alluding to the 1930s bank robbery 
couple, Bonnie Parker and Clyde Barrow, for years now, at least since Beyonce lent her vocals to 2002 Jay Z single, bearing the robbers' names, and when the couple had been dating for about a year already. It is an us against the world imagery that truly makes a point as divorce reports swirl around them. Holly Bergen, who starred opposite Gregory Peck and Robert Mitchum in the 1962 film classic Cape Fear, died Saturday. Her spokeswoman told The Rap she was 84. Bergen's publicist, Judy Katz, told The Rap in a statement that Bergen died peacefully at her Connecticut home Saturday morning, surrounded by loved ones. Katz told The Rap in a statement it was with great sadness to announce the passing of legendary actress, friend, and client. Polly Bergen, she died peacefully at her home in Southbury, Connecticut this morning at 11.10 a.m., surrounded by her family, longtime personal manager Jane McCormick, and close friends. Born Nellie Paulina Bergen in Knoxville, Tennessee, Bergen appeared in many films, including the Dean Martin, Jerry Lewis comedy At War with the Army, That's My Boy and the Stooge. Her decades-span career included a role in 1990's John Waters film Cryberries, starring Johnny Depp as Mrs. Vernon Williams. Bergen, who was also an accomplished actress on the small screen, winning an Emmy Award for her work in on the 1950s television series Playhouse 90, on which she played singer Helen Morgan. She was nominated for another Emmy for her per portrayal of Rhoda Hendry in the ABC miniseries The Winds of War and War and Remembrance. The star of her own variety show, The Polly Bergen Show, which ran on NBC during the 1957-1958 season. She also appeared on The Sopranos and Desperate Housewives, the latter of which she earned another Emmy nomination in her later years. An accomplished singer with nearly a dozen albums to her credit, Bergen received a Tony nomination for her portrayal of Calarda Champion in Follies in 2001 in the Best Featured Actress in a Musical category. Bergen's other career accomplishments included the launch of, co of a cosmetics line, the Polly Bergen Company. She also wrote three books about beauty. She was 84. Eric the Actor Lynch, a regular guest on the Howard Stern radio show, has died at the age of 39. His manager, John Fratto, confirmed Sunday in a Twitter post that the radio personality died Saturday. His cause of death was not revealed, but Lynch died surrounded by family and friends in Sacramento, Fratto told TMZ. Lynch, who was known as Eric the Midget on the Cyrus XM show and was a member of Stern's Whack Pack, stood three feet tall. Health problems confined him to a motorized wheelchair, but didn't prevent him from yelling at Stern regularly. Lynch never detailed his health problems on the show, but several times claimed to have outlived doctors' expectations. He also did guest spots on the TV show Fringe and In Plain Sight. East Joan Rivers Tribute Fashion Police Celebrating Joan was watched by 1.1 million viewers. The event marked E's highest rated Friday in two years and the, high, and the highest rated weekly episode of Fashion Police ever. Joan Day, as it was called, was well received on social media too. According to E, it was the second most talked about cable program of the day. E aired a Fashion Police Marathon all day Friday, but the ratings milestone came at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time when the 90-minute commemorative episode began. The highly rated episode featured remarks from Joan's daughter, Melissa Rivers, as well as from the show's co-stars, Kelly Osborne, uh, Juliana Rancid, and George Kistanopoulos. As the rap previously reported, Fashion Police will continue despite the loss of Rivers. Uh, the network said in a September 19th statement, we've decided with Melissa Rivers' blessing that Joan would have wanted the franchise to continue. Rivers died September 4 from complications from throat surgery. She was rushed to Mount Sinai Hospital in New York on August 28th and had been on life support. An autopsy on the comedy legend has been completed, but the results did not yield a firm cause or manner of death, a spokesperson for the New York Medical Examiner's Office told the rep. The New York State Department of Health is also investigating the circumstances surrounding Rivers' death. In a remarkably terrible display of journalistic ethics, but even more remarkably shrewd marketing move, Alaska reporter Charlotte Green abruptly quit on the air as she finished the report on the debate over a medical marijuana ballot measure in the state in an organization called the Alaska Cannabis Club. As it turns out, the KTVA 11 reporter had been moonlighting as the CEO of that esteemed club, which she re revealed with some real flair as she quit her life in journalism. Um, she told the audience at home, Now everything you've heard is why I, the actual owner of the Alaska Cannabis Club, will be dedicating all of my energy towards fighting for freedom and fairness, which begins with legalizing marijuana here in Alaska. 
And as for this job, well, not that I have a choice, but fuck it, I quit. The move stunned her on-air colleagues and drew a short response from her now former employer. Uh, the station said on its Facebook page, We sincerely apologize for the inappropriate language used by a KTVA reporter during her live presentation on the air tonight. The employee has been terminated. And in a related story confirmed by TMZ, the Alaskan reporter who quit her job to fight for legalized weed allegedly smoked so much pot at home, her next-door neighbor's kid got violently ill, and now they're wearing in, co in court. Tyler um, Gilbridge told TMZ Charlo and her boyfriend moved into the apartment above his in June and claimed she immediately started stinking up the place with so much reefer, his four-year-old daughter became violently sick from the fumes seeping through the walls. Tyler said that he ratted Charlo out of the building, out to the building manager, and that's when things got ugly. According to court documents, Charlo harassed and threatened Tyler several times, telling him to, quote, watch his back. Tyler filed for and got a temporary restraining order against Charlo two weeks ago. She since moved out of the building and is to stay at least 20 feet away from Tyler and his family. A court hearing is scheduled for later this month. Tyler claims Tyler is the one harassing her by hurling racial slurs. He denies that and says she wanted to file a restraining order of her own, but it was too busy because she had a job. Saturday Night Live is about to lose its most seasoned performer. Kenan Thompson will be leaving the show after this season, TMZ has learned. Sources connected to SNL told TMZ Thompson, the most tenured African-American cast member in the show's history plans, to leave last season, uh, planned to leave last season, but decided to stay after head honcho Lauren Markles asked him to stay on, citing the show's massive turnover this season. TMZ told Keenan has no hard feelings and is leaving on great terms. Um, the sources said he's in talks for a new show and plans on moving to LA with his wife and brand new baby when the season ends. After months of speculation, director Brian Singer is officially returning to direct X Men Apocalypse, a source confirms to E News. The upcoming X-Men flick will follow this year's X-Men's Days of Future Past and will mark Singer's fourth X-Men film. Singer isn't the only one returning for the superhero franchise next to installment. Stars Jennifer Lawrence, James McAvoy, Michael Fassbender, Nicholas Holt, Evan Peters, and many other members will also reportedly be returning. Back in June, Singer teased a, a photo of the script treatment for X-Men Apocalypse at X-Men Movies, hashtag X-Men. Singer simply captioned the sneak peek pic, which was his first Instagram post ever. According to Singer's pic, the treatment hinted that the film's opening scene would be set in Egypt or one of the ten other African countries that the Nile River runs through. The May 2014 release of X-Men Days of Future Past was slightly overshadowed by a sexual abuse lawsuit targeted at Singer. A 31-year-old man named Michael Egan allegedly that Singer drugged and raped him back in 1999 when Egan was only 17 years old. Singer, 49, blasted the sexual assault claims and told E! News at the time, The allegations against me are outrageous, vicious, and completely false. I do not want these fictitious claims to divert any attention from X-Men days of future past. This fantastic film is a labor of love and one of the greatest experiences of my career. So out of respect to all the extraordinary contributions from the incredibly ta talented actors and crew involved, I've decided not to participate in the upcoming media events for the film. However, I promise when this situation is over, the facts will show this to be the sick, twisted shakedown. Hit it. PlayStation TV will hit the U.S. on October 14th with nearly 700 compatible games. Though the PlayStation TV won't support all Vita games as its October 14th debut, the minuscule console will play nearly 700 Vita release, according to Sony. Less a proper console and more device that combines the functionality of numerous Sony game machines, the PlayStation TV plays digital Vita games, PSP games, and PlayStation 1 games, while streaming PS3 games via PlayStation Now and PlayStation 4 games via that console's remote, remote play feature. Specifically named among support Vita games are hits like Rayman Origins and the God of War Collections, Borderline 2, and Persona 4 Golden. Additionally, Sony has announced that the upcoming Adventure Time Titan game, Adventure Time The Secrets of the Nameless Kingdom, from Little Orbit will launch simultaneously from both the Vita handheld and the PlayStation TV on November, 4th, on November 18th. 
Sony has revealed plans to add support for additional games in the future, including Minecraft, through the PlayStation Dot blog offers no timeline on when those updates might be available. British actress and UN Women's Goodwill Ambassador Emma Watson launched her He for She campaign talking about her experience and views on feminism and equality. She said, it is time that we all see gender as a spectrum. Instead of two sets of opposing ideals, we should stop defining each other by what we are not and start defining ourselves by who we are. The UN Global the UN Women Global Goodwill Ambassador was at the UN headquarters in New York on Saturday, September 20th, to deliver a strong and personal message on equality, gender roles, and feminism. Watson said, I want men to take up this mantle so their daughters, sisters, and mothers can be free from prejudice, but also so their sons have permission to be vulnerable and human, too, and in doing so, be a more true and complete version of themselves. The UN Women Campaign, called He for She, aims to mobilize one billion men and boys as advocates of changing, of change in ending inequalities that women and girls face globally. In the speech that earned her a standing ovation, Watson stressed the importance of men's involvement in promoting women's rights. Watson said, liberating men from stereotypes ultimately benefits women. The actress, famously known for her role as Hermione in the Harry Potter series, poked fun at being in the UN but turned serious about her advocacy. She also spoke at length about her personal experience as a feminist and how society views the concept. The 24-year-old actress took on her role as UN Women's Ambassador six months ago. Earlier this month, she visited Uruguay to learn about women's political participation there. Watson said she decided to become a feminist after being called bossy from wanting to direct a play at eight and grew up as a teenager being sexualized by the media and seeing how gender stereotypes stop her girlfriends from joining sports teams and male friends from expressing their feelings. She said that deciding to become a feminist was uncomplicated, but she found from personal experience in her own research that feminists were viewed as too strong, too aggressive, anti-men, unattractive. She said that the notion of feminists should be expanded to include those who help women and girls achieve their full potential. She also stressed that both men and women must work together for the girls and women who are less privileged than she. She cites women who earn less than men for doing the same work, child brides, and girls who are unable to finish their education. And finally, after The Hunger Games and Divergent, another young adult sci-fi feature is taking the box office by storm, The Maze Runner, in which a group of boys are trapped in a giant maze that changed shapes every night, topped the global rankings with $70.1 million in revenues. And it was also the number one movie in the box office this weekend. Director Wes Ball can be proud of his very first feature, which took the top spot at the worldwide box office for the weekend of, this, of September 21st. The Maze Runner was also in first place at the U.S. domestic box office with a total of, with making a total of $32.5 million. A distant second was Scott Frank's thriller Walk Among the Tombstones with Liam Neeson brought in $18.1 million worldwide during its opening weekend, including a $13.1 million from U.S. theaters. Meanwhile, Lucy entered a downhill phase after two weeks on top of the worldwide box office. Luc Besson's sci-fi feature landed in third place with this weekend with $13.7 million. Showing only in the U.S. the comedy This Is Where I Leave You with Jason Bateman, Tina Fey, and Jane Fonda carried out a solid opening weekend with $11.86 million, surpassing Galaxy, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy with its $10.38 million in global revenues. In 6th, 7th, and 8th place, respectively, were Dolphin, 2, Dolphin Tale 2 with $10.2 million, No Good Deed with Idria's Elba, which uh, ranked in $10.2 million, showing only in U.S. theaters, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which made $9.95 million. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and Sex Tape round out the top 10 with global revenues of $8.4 million and $7.6 million, respectively. And that is your entertainment report for Monday, September 22, 2014. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some of the major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook or on Twitter, facebook.com slash the entertainment report with Ray Mello. That's R A Y M E L O. Or on Twitter at the Enter Report. You can also listen to the Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just search for the Entertainment Report. It will take you to uh, this episode and past episodes that I've done for the show. 
Have a great day, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.